If you look back on your life, the best coaches that you have distinguish between performance and development coaching. Now, performance coaching is typically what happens in sales. We focus on how people are hitting their results. Yes or no, is quota being attained? Yes or no, are they booking enough meetings? Now, on a short-term goal, performance coaching can be really powerful. This is how you structure an email. This is how you structure a proposal or have a great conversation. All of that helps on the short term. But the most memorable types of coaching comes from development. Development helps you guide whoever you're coaching to get to the next level in their career. And you do this by really investing on who they are and helping them achieve their optimal performance level. But this isn't about short term, this is how you do it. It's teaching them how to think through something much differently. So when you're going through a coaching feedback session or trying to figure out how do you help your team get to the next level, here's a framework that is really helpful to use. First, start with the results. This is a quantified way that you can help your team understand where they fit in. Either focus a visual on the goal or the rest of the team. Where is this person fitting in? Now, if they're above average or they're within range of what you want them to do, show them what the numbers are showing you. And these results should be transparent. Everybody should have access to the types of results that you're measuring them against. And usually if they're falling behind, you gotta start going down the flow chart and figuring out what might be causing this lack of results or them to excel in the results that other people can start using. So the next phase that you look at is the effort. Are they putting in the effort to achieve the results? Now, for a prospecting team, this effort is usually measured on something like number of emails sent or number of calls made or number of connects. There's a lot of different ways to measure that effort. For an account executive, this could be the number of opportunities that they're creating, how in-depth they go into their analysis, their account planning, the contacts that they add to an opportunity. Are they putting in the effort to get to that result? Now, every now and then, I know you're going to say, Dan, I got this lone wolf on the team. They are crushing it, but they're doing it in a way that is not repeatable for all the new hires that I have or the new process we're trying to implement. So ultimately, we can realize that a lone wolf, if they are getting results, but they're putting in very little effort, that is fine for the short term because they will probably come back to you and say, you know what? I'm killing it right now. I don't need your help. But if you realize that if they start dropping on results, let's say in two, three months, they miss out on what they're trying to be held accountable for, we have a challenge on our hands. So you just focus back on two. Right now, the effort that I'm looking for will help you win future deals. But ultimately, if you're missing out on results in the future and you're not following the process that we have in place, we have a challenge. So then that leads us to the third tier of our flowchart. And this comes back to knowledge. Does your team know what you want them to do? Are they writing emails in the correct format? Are they structuring their calls in a professional way? Are they writing proposals or handling negotiation versus trade in a customer-centric matter? Do they know what they're supposed to do? Typically, this is measured with something like training and certification. They take a test. They do a role play. They demonstrate you that they know what good looks like. So if you have a rep that has the knowledge they're putting in the effort and they're still not getting the results, this points to the fourth tier. And this is really where managers as coaches comes into play. This is called skills. Skills is simply defined as knowledge applied to effort. Just because you know how to write a great email and you're writing a thousand emails a month doesn't mean that you're applying the knowledge to the effort. So if you're blasting people out doing this really horrible spam type messaging and you're getting a ton of unsubscribes that will hurt you as you have a limited total addressable market, this can cause real big issues for the company in the future. So you as a coach need to guide. How do I apply the knowledge to the effort? A simple way to implement this would be using something like a bingo card. You have a grid with the skills broken out with what you will be evaluating for. And you simply quantify how they're applying the knowledge to the effort. 
If you focus and say you're killing it on this part, but you're struggling on something else, you can now point to the bingo card that shows how the knowledge should be applied to the effort. And so using this Rex framework, or what we lovingly call as the requirements to get promoted, the Rex, ultimately you can guide your team to maximize their performance and their long-term goals of whatever they want to develop into as a professional.